turn my mic up. Boy, yo. Take there. Yeah, yeah, uh, on the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. Good morning, man. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I'm great. Well, I'm, I'm definitely glad to finally get an opportunity to connect with you. Awesome, awesome. awesome. All right. Dope. So we are here with the uh, the highly requested um, Hamza, <laughs> <laughs> Hamza Sabri, um, CEO of Global Connects. Um, yes. welcome, welcome to the show, Hamza. Man, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Um, you're doing great things out here, man, with your podcast and creating this uh, culture for business and entrepreneurship. Um, just breaking the stereotype, you know, that you got to hoop. You know, you got to uh, be a football player. You got to be a rapper, entertainer, you know, to get to this money. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. Making business, being a businessman and being a businessman or a businesswoman is being cool now. Ten years ago, you know, being in business is like you lame if you got your own business or you're an entrepreneur. But now it's like the cool thing. It's the way no to have your own, to build no your doubt. own business. Yes. No doubt, no doubt. I love it. I love it. So um, Global Connects is a government contracting consulting firm. Is that is that um, correct? Is that how I say that? Yes, it's a government contracting consulting firm. So we engage with small businesses and help them and assist them on how to procure, procure contracts, okay. how to win contracts. Mm -hmm. Okay, dope. Well, let's get started. Um, let's get started with your story. You know, I want to learn okay. a, bit, a little bit about you, um, how you got into this space. Um, tell the audience, you know, a little bit about yourself, where you're from so forth okay. and so on. All right. My name pronounced Hamza Sabri. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, zone six to be exact. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I got into government contract in a very unique, special type of way. Um, in 2014, I was looking for, um, looking for some opportunities just to like expand, um, to, um, pretty much learn something new experience. Um, I got hired, uh, by a construction company. It was a small minority owned construction company um, that focused 100% on government contracting. So 100% of their business came from the government. I didn't know. Okay. I just thought that it was just it's this con construction. <clears throat> New into the space. Um, when I came on, you know, I got a real, like, uh, some people call it an addictive personality. So anything that is interest to me or I'm curious into, like I dive deep into it until I master it like as fast and efficiently as possible. Got you. Um, within nine months of me working with that, with this construction company as a project manager, I procured and secured $1.6 million in government contracting, state, local, and federal contracts. Um, with After that, I immediately got promoted to uh, the BDC department or director of the BDC department to where that business development center to where that I was training and teaching other people, hired 10 other people and trained them and taught them how to um, win contracts for the company with my formula. Okay. Um, that led me to, you know, doing business with FAA, Homeland Security, Department of Interior, uh, U.S. Coastal Guard, Marine, Navy. Um, U.S. EPA, um, and even U.S. embassies in Pakistan and Indonesia. So government contract had me across the map domestically across the United States and internationally as well. I stayed with them uh, for another six months under that BDC department, and then I resigned. And I started offering my services to other businesses, pretty much started freelancing and doing consulting services and procurement service for other businesses, engineering companies, um, trucking companies. Um, cleaning services, executive limousine company, um, uh, lawn care businesses. That, these are clients I still have to this day that I help win six-figure, seven-figure contracts for. Um, and I just started, you know, procuring my services out there. <clears throat> now it led me up to where that um, I started. Actually, I started, I started winning my first contract in 2015. I won my first contract with Clayton County Public School Systems here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a three year, excuse me, a one year, three year optional contract. I still have this contract to this day. It expires June of next, uh, this year, 2020, to sell rat traps. Six figure contract to sell rat traps. <laughs> wow. I don't know, I guess, Clay, I guess Clayton County Public School got some kind of <laughs> rat infested problems. Wow, so, wow. But that's just an idea of how, you know, simple, simple things that government spending money on that you could take advantage of. 
mm. you know, and, and make good profit returns on it. Um, so I started, that was my co first contract that I ever won for myself as I was winning contracts with other people and then getting a percentage, like more of like a broker, a consultant for it. Um, taking that same information that I learned, understanding the federal acquisition regulation, which is all the laws that's mandated and clauses that have to do with government contracting on the federal, state, and local uh, level. Um, I took that information and used it in my advantage because we all know, well, if you don't know, laws are hitting coals for how to access something. Right. Not law, laws are not made for you say, hey, you cannot do this. If you read between the lines, laws are made say, this is how you do this. Right, right. There you go. You know I mean? That's a fact. <laughs> or, or how you look at it, or your perspective. Or how, it's all perspective. You yeah. know what I mean? So I, I used that information and studied it because this is, this is the, the, the platform. This is the formula to how to do business with us. Mm. That's what the laws are made for. <clears throat> it's, it's not sexy at all. No one likes to read the far read. It's, it's a big old <laughs> stack of laws, this law, and I read it like a book. It's like the Bible to government contracts, so why not read that? And what was why that not? book? What was that book again? Uh, it's not a book. Oh, oh. I treat it like a book, but it's called the uh, FAR. The, the FAR. F-A-R stands for Federal Acquisition Regularization. Okay. So that is all that is mandated under government contracting all the laws and clauses and steps, how to do business, how to execute, how to uh, consistently win contracts. Mm. Um, so I started winning contracts for myself in 2015. So that was my, was my first, Clayton County Public School was the first bid I ever bid it on for myself. And that was the first contract I won that I bid it on, which was okay. dope. And yeah. it was a four year, and it was a four year contract. <laughs> that's, that's super dope. Okay. And I still have it to this day, so that's awesome. So then after that, you know, I started doing a lot of federal contracts, Department of State, uh, U.S. Army, um, creating a lot of relationships and stuff like that through this, you know, special niche type of arena. And my past performance came so strong because I have done business with so many different federal government agencies, state and local government agencies that it allowed me to be able to take advantage of getting contracts without actually bidding on them. Mm. Um, and this is without any type of certifications outside of being a small business, minority owned business and so forth. So, um, under the simplified acquisition procedure, that's a clause under the federal acquisition regulation. It allows a government contractor officer to give a no big contracting, a no big contract to a company that is competent, that has strong past performance and the capacity to provide a product or service. Okay. So with me reaching that criteria, I just share those type of laws and clauses to these contractor offices that I'm already doing business with. And then, you know, you get a phone call, email, say, hey, here's a request for quote. This is under 250,000. Can you give me a price on it? We'll see the PO. We'll see the contract over. Right. And, and this is how I get business now. Today, which I'm not actually bidding. If I'm bidding on something, it's a strategic bid. It used to be throw a thousand things at the wall. Let's see what's okay. going to stick. Okay. Now it's like, we're strategically throwing stuff on the wall that we know is going to stick. Mm, mm. Dope, you know? dope. And, Go ahead, so, go ahead. Um, so now, now, Ramel, it's, it's to a point to where, like, you know, I, I create a strong footprint into this market, strong relationships. Um, I've been doing this almost seven years now. And I'm like, hey, our people are not aware of this opportunity that's out here that's set aside for us. That's a fact. You know what I mean? I've helped other businesses, uh, boutique style, I helped other businesses get six-figure contracts, seven-figure contracts. And I'm like, most people don't even know about the money that's set aside for you just being a small business, a minority owned business, a female owned business, yeah, a veteran owned business. It's a lot of money is being set aside. So fun fact and data, government spend about 4.7, $4.8 trillion a year. All right. That's the federal government budget. 23% of that has to be set aside for small businesses. Mm. That's a $800, $900 billion budget a year that's being deployed out to small businesses. The wow. fiscal year, the fiscal year for the government is between October to October, which means that you have this time frame to deploy this money out in order to get a new budget or extend the increased budget for the next fiscal year. So they have to spend this money. So like I tell all my clients, why not do business with someone that has to do business with you? It's it's easy. Cookie right. cutter. Once you understand the, the blueprint, the, the formula, the basic steps, you can take advantage of these opportunities. That's money that's set aside for people that look like me and you. Mm. Mm. No Minority problem. owned, you know, women owned, small business owned. It's small business in the federal government eyes, 
it says that you have to have less than 49 employees and doing under $25 million a year. That, that's not small business to me, but if y'all say that is small business, I'm with it. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's you know? crazy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. All, so my goal is now is to empower the people through government contracting. The best way we can empower our people is by putting some money in their pocket and the information that go along with how to do so. Simple. Mm. All that other stuff is BS to me. It's, oh. it's all BS. The, the way you empower your people, you put some money in their pocket and give them the information how they could go catch their own fish. Right, right, right. You know, any of that other stuff, man, is irrelevant to me. You want to yeah. empower me, give me some game. Give me some information. <laughs> give me some tools. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put some money in my pocket. Yeah, that's yeah, how we, yeah. That's how we empower ourselves. Right. That's in a the, fact. In, the, in, in the world that we live in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we living in a capitalistic world, so we got to have money to make means. And we got to have the knowledge so where we can repeat and keep making means consistently. Right, right. That's the name of the game. So that's, that's what I stand on. When you grow, we grow. That's our motto here at Global Connects. When, when we grow your business, we're growing our business. Right. Right. When I empower you, I'm empowering myself. You know? That's so it creates a synergy, a network of people, network of businesses to where that we synergize and create a, a community because this government contract thing is so like a special niche. Nobody wanna talk about it, everyone wanna act secretive about it. But it's like the information is out here, it's public information. Yeah. I'm just sharing public information. I'm and I'm and I'm sharing with people how I use public information to make me my own private money. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> no, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a you fact. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, I'm passionate and I enjoy building other businesses. I, I like to brag more of what I have done for someone else than what I have done for myself. Mm. Okay. Mm. But in, in the last in the last 90 days, for for Global Connect myself, we did 280 80 grand in government contracts just in the last three months. So Damn. so so technically, if you look off those numbers, we're projected to do at least 1.7, 1.8 million dollars this year for 2020. Wow. Just off a of country for myself. Wow. But my goal for 2020 is to build six new businesses to six figure and seven figure businesses by the end of 2020. That's my goal. Mm. Wow. Dope. Man. You know what Dope. I mean? This is powerful stuff, man. All right. So to someone listening to this, um, this interview and, um, they already have a business, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, um, th what's the best way to, uh, I guess align yourself with 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 these government contracts. Like you know, let's say your business is already existing, right? And you never thought mm -hmm. about being in a government contract space until they heard you speak today, right. right? What's the best way to start aligning yourself with finding these type of contracts that are out there, um, out there for us? Okay. <clears throat> First, you gotta identify your niche. Okay. Um, I always I always tell them find your niche, then get rich. Identify <laughs> your niche, then get rich. Okay. 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 So whatever service, whatever you want to provide, whatever product you want, you want to identify that. Then, you know, I break it down to data analytics because everything is, is data at the end of the day. Everything is statistics. So you want to identify what government agencies are spending the most money on or your service or your product. Because mm. those are the government agencies you want to go to. We talk about federal government. It's so many different agencies. You know, you have, you know, different departments. You got Homeland Security, you got U.S. Army. You have, this is on the federal side, it's different agencies. So you want to identify which one's spending the most money. Um, the key step to get into government contracting, if you're going to be new into it, is to get registered. You have to be, you have to be registered as a federal contractor. There's no license to take. There's no class to take. There's no certificate you get. There's just a registration. And that's for free. The government allows you to register to be a federal contractor for free. Okay. The website for the link is called SAM, S A M, dot gov. SAM stands for System Awards Management. That is the official site to where you register your business to be a federal contractor. There's no fee to register to do business with the government. And, and you talk, read, talk about that registration process real quick. If just, that, registration, that registration process is these are the things that you need to have in order to, to register. One, you need to have your articles of organization, whether you're an LLC, limited liability company, or you're an S Corp, a C Corp, or a partnership entity. Then you need to have your employer identification number, AKA EIN number from the IRS, that's for free. <clears throat> then you need to have your Dun & Bradstreet number, <clears throat> which is a private uh, company, Dun & Bradstreet, they give you a nine digit number uh, they use for building business credit, um, and for government contracts. So anyone that doesn't have a Dun & Bradstreet number, if you go to that the website and you apply for your Dun's number, um, they're gonna have a box. And on that box, 
two boxes. They're gonna say, what are you gonna use your Dun & Bradstreet number one for building building business credit or two for grants to government contracting? Click on grants and government contracting, you'll probably get your Dunn's number that same day or next following day. Mm. Um, then you're gonna have, you need your um, a, a business account. You need to have a business account, bank account, account number, route number, because sometimes the government will pay you through a wire, a wire transfer, then giving you out, a, out, out, out checks. Okay. You have these four essential things, your articles of organization, your EIN number, your Dun & Bradstreet number, and business and bank account. Then pretty much you're just going through the process now of filling out all the, um, the uh, open boxes, uh, address, um, the structure of your business. On this website with the federal government, you're, you're able to self-certify your company. So if you're black, you can, you're a minority, you're a minority-owned business. If you're a female, you're a women-owned, female-owned business. If you're a uh, small business, if you fit under less than 49 employees and doing under $25 million a year, um, you can uh, self-certify yourself as a veteran-owned if, you've been, if you're um, a disabled veteran. These are the things that you can do to put yourself more into a field of set aside or money that's set aside for your demographics. You can self-certify yourself through SAM.gov and you're recognized. Once you approve through your registration, you're recognized as a federal contractor. They will give you out your cage code number. Your cage code number is not your license. Uh, uh, it's a lot of uh, information that's going on here that's mis misleading, but your cage code number is just a identification number that the government knows who you are, where you at. So location, location code. Only gotcha. the government can give you a cage code. No one else can give you a cage code number, but the government. Okay. 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 And that's for free. And how long does that process usually take to get that number? It, once you, once you put mm. everything in and nothing get kicked back, um, you put all your information in, it takes about maybe 10 days. Okay. Two weeks. Okay. After you, after, after you get approved, you get an email saying, congratulations. Um, you're now contracted with the government. Um, and then following that email or in that same email, they will issue out your cage code number. Okay, gotcha. And your cage code number is just pretty much, like I said, is a six six digit character that pretty much is, it's like when a government contractor officer say, hey, what's your cage code number? You give it to them, they know exactly who you are. Okay. Where you, where you at, what type of business you have. Everything populates. It's for their system. It's for their database. Got you. Now, they don't need any other credentials. I mean, because I mean, I, I could be a white man and I could say, hey, I'm, I'm black. You know what I mean? Like, how, how do they yeah. get they, into they, that and figure and, all that? <clears throat> I'm not sure if you pay attention to the news, but there have been a lot of situations to where that you had these white contractors mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, looking at, you know, fraud charges right now because they're self-certifying themselves at these, of these certain certifications, <laughs> which they work with. They weren't right. 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 So there's no, there's no, um, once you self-certify yourself as this, there's no one to actually come do an audit to come no see audit. what type of business you are, unless you were hitting some certain type of crazy numbers, mm, you know, you. you're making some type of attention, you know, on yourself. But for the other certifications outside of that, you know, you have to go through um, uh, producing other documents to show proof of you being a minority owned company, uh, a small business, a veteran owned, a women owned company and so forth. So um, I wanted to touch on um, socially, economically disadvantaged business. Okay. That's just another sort of certification. You can self certify yourself you know, socially, economically disadvantaged person. What, what, when I say that, what do you think of, Romel? I think of a black person. Thank you. <laughs> this is the government, this is the government telling, telling who they have this money set aside for in a fancy way. They're just right. saying, y'all black folks, <laughs> this is for y'all socially, economically disadvantaged people. Right, right. You know what I mean? So this is a form, the way I, I receive that, you know, when I read these laws, the clause, I receive, okay, this is a form of reparation. Mm. Reparations, mm. if you look at it, how everybody say I want the handout, you know, get some money, fight for reparations. You're not going to get million dollars handed out individually to you. Ramel, I'm not just going to say, hey, here go two million dollars, bro. Here mm. go your 48, here go your 400 acres in a mule. Right, here right, go right. your 400, or here go your 400 acres in a Maserati. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no mule no more. <laughs> you know, your 400. Right, so, right, right, right. So it's like we're living in a, in a business capitalist type of world. It's all businesses, small businesses will run this world. So your reparations in the form of business. Mm. Here's this money that's set aside for you, create a business and you can get some of it. It's powerful. 
create something here. Here's the avenue for you. That's how I read. That's how I read as reparations from you saying this is billions of dollars. You're saying this is uh, you're 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 deploying out a hundred billion dollars towards minority owned businesses. Right, right, right. So that means you exclude yourself from all the other races and ethnicities, and you're saying this is for us mm. in a fancy way. You got to just break it down lame term. This is for y'all black folks. Right, right. So, 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 so what they made was a very, very powerful certification or program, which are called the AA certification or the okay. AA program, uh, which is a, a program to where that you are in for nine years. You have to, you have to meet the requirement to get into this program. But guess who is for? It's for socially and economically disadvantaged person. Mm. You have to be a socially economically disadvantaged person in order to get into this program or this certification. Got you. And what are some and of last, those re re requirements to get into the uh, program? You know, be at least two years in business. Um, you have to show some type of exponential growth that you will have with this program. Um, you have to have a net worth of less than $250,000 individual. Um, you had to have at least 51, the, the, the socially economically disadvantaged person had to have at least 51% ownership of the entity order to qualify to submit in the paperwork. It takes maybe six months to a year to get something back once you put in the, once you put in the, uh, your application for the AA program. Six months if to you, a year? If you're approved, it's on and popping because the AA program allows a, a government contractor officer to give you a no bid contract up to $7.5 million off one phone call mm. at, a, at a time for services. Right. For good for goods, commodities, or products, it's five point five million dollars. Just one call. No bid. You're not bidding. Wow. So this this is your 40 acres in a Bentley Maserati Santa, whatever you want to call it, because once you get into AA program, you can get you can turn up your business from making fifty thousand a year to five million the mm. first year. Dope. You you stay in this program from nine for nine years. Every client that I have that is AA or has been through that process, I said, the goal is for you to get kicked out of the program. Right. They're like, what the hell, what the hell are you talking about, Ham, to get kicked out? I don't wanna get kicked out. I said, you got nine years to be in there. The way you get kicked out is that you have to do $100 million per year, three years consecutively to get kicked out of the program. Kick me out. Kick me out. <laughs> you know, kick me out, yes. That's what I'm trying to do. Right, right, right. Yeah, $100 million per year you get kicked out. You no longer are a small business. You broke the threshold. Right. That's what the, it, it's for to empower you, empower your business to break you outside of that threshold. Now you're solid. You're solidified. You want these big corporation companies out here generating hundred million dollars a year. Mm. You know, you don't need our systems no more. That's a fact. And it's all, this is, these certification programs all just marketing material. Like once you get AA certified, the money just don't come from the ground, you know, it'll come from the sky. Or just come anywhere. Oh, I'm AA certified with my money. I'm waiting on the phone. I'm waiting on the phone to ring. No, they don't know that you AA. This is marketing material. You got to work this. Mm. Government contract, you still have to market yourself. You still mm. have to sell. It's just because you're a government contractor or a minority owned contract, they're like, okay, you minority. Here goes some money. No, you right, have to right. let these people know who you are. How do you let them know who you are? The same way you let your companies know who you are when you're applying for a job, a job resume. So you need a business resume, AKA capability statement. That's, that's the name for it. Your capability statement is exactly what it is. You're making a statement about your capability. What can you gotcha. offer? Your services, your past performance, uh, your references. You know, and, and it's a certain template, a way that is, is formed that you submit to the government or contract the officer so they can know exactly who you are and what you're about. Mm. They can't give you no money if they don't know what kind of vision you are. Right, right, right. That's just, right. just because you're registered as a federal contract doesn't mean that, you know, the money's about to start coming. You got to work it. You have to work it. You got to let people know who you are. You got to go to these these seminars. You got to engage with your with your with your small business or your procurement officer. Guess what? Their job is to deploy out this money. Their mm. job is to engage with small businesses. So so Ramil, let, since we touch, touched on that part of engaging with uh, contract officers, unless you got any questions for me, no, 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 go, go while, right, while go, in, flow, bro, in. go, 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 bro, go. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm learning. I'm learning. You know, you don't have to be registered with Sam to do business on a state or local level. All you gotta do is become a vendor. Register mm. with your local municipality. Mm. You know, every every webs, every local municipality, every state municipality, 
they all have to put these solicitations or bids out as public information. Every county website, every state website has a procurement department. They have small business uh, specialists or contractor officers. They have to put a list out or post a list onto their website of all the solicitations, whether it's services or products that they're trying to buy. Mm. Okay, so when you talk about local government agencies or state government agencies, you're talking about your public school systems, the fire department, police department, your, your courts, your city hall, your local municipality buildings. This is all government agency money and they have to spend this money. And what most people don't know, because they say federal, I'm a federal contractor. It sounds, it just sounds sexy. I'm a federal contractor. <laughs> right. No, I, I say I'm a government contractor because I go after all government money. Mm. The federal, federal government budget is only $500 billion they deploy out. The federal government deploys out $500 billion per year, statistics say. Okay. Local and state government agencies deploy out $1.3 trillion a year. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Now we talking. <laughs> That's why I don't care about the title. I don't care about the money. Right, the right, money, right. I, I make more money local and state than in federal. Mm. It's, it's more money being deployed out in state and local contracts. Wow, wow, wow. 1.3 trillion compared to 500 billion. But everybody put emphasis on federal contract, federal contract, like that's the bread and butter. Mm. So it just sounds good that you're contracting on a federal level. That's awesome. But you can get real, you can make millions in your own city. That's all I'm trying to say. Wow. You can make, you can, you can make a six figure, seven figure business in your own county right now. And this goes across the whole United States. As long as you got web access, you can do this across the world. Where, 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 do you, where do you find that to get set up with, with your local government? So, like I, like I tell everybody, I say every county and every city have their own procurement. So whatever county you're in, just, just Google. Um, I, I'm here in Atlanta, so I say Fulton County, I'll put Fulton County Procurement Department. And then the link will probably pop up of their process, how to register as a vendor, um, uh, their, their site to where they have all your bid, they bids and solicitations they put out there, stuff like that. <clears throat> you have to have, um, like I say, you don't have to be registered with the federal government to do business on a low and state, state level. Um, you just have to become a registered vendor. And all you got to do is have your articles of organization, your business license, um, I'll put all your net codes or your, uh, your services that you offer. And once you register, now you're on that vendor list. So they would email you different stuff that works in your category mm. of opportunities you can bid out for. But you can do this across the United States. I went contracts in Philadelphia, in DC, in California, all based out of here out of Atlanta. Right, right. Wow. Wow. And compete. And the smaller the city, the smaller the county, the less the competition is. Hmm. You know, it's less competition in these small little counties because they're giving it to they get it's, it's, it's real political. They give these contracts to, to good buddy old system, you know? Right, right, right. If, if, if I'm a contractor officer in a small county and there's only but twenty thousand people here and you're the only person that registered with me, Ramel, you're gonna get all the work. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not telling nobody about it. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And 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 under the simplified acquisition procedure, it allows a, a government contractor officer on the federal level to give out a no, uh, no bid contract up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's on the federal level. Mm. On a state, it's one hundred twenty five thousand. On a local and city, it's twenty five thousand mm. dollars. So your local municipality, city, or county has the they have the legal capability to give your company a no bid contract up to twenty five thousand dollars. <sighs> Man, this this, I, stu this stuff is gold, man. I'm, man, I'm listening. Listen, I take advantage. I'll say this because I take advantage of these low hanging fruit, what I call it. Okay. Everybody goes for these million dollar projects and all this stuff. One, I master I mastered the formula of going after micro contracts or low hanging fruit. That's contracts that are under two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, I don't do this for my clients. I do this for for myself. Our our system here at Globe Connect, how we operate, how we consistently win. I win contracts. Oh, man, I hate bragging on myself. But I gotta, I gotta <laughs> let people know. Look, I went contracts off this formula at least three, four times a week. Wow. I went federal contracts at least two, three times a week. We just won one uh, Thursday. Just won one Thursday for dog food. Mm. Thirty thousand dollar contract to supply dog food to the U.S. Army. I guess they got some dogs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
They got 500, they wanted 545 pound bags of dog food. Right. Wow. Okay. I'm sending to them at $140 per, per bag. It only cost me $78 per bag. Y'all do the math. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Now that just took me off course. Now I just had to <laughs> let that know. This is the type of low hanger fruit that I try to take advantage of or am taking advantage of because guess what? Under the federal acquisition regularization, on these micro contracts, on these thresholds of stuff that's between a couple hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars, they just made the threshold. It used to be three thousand, but now they extended that to ten grand. Okay, there's a clause in there uh, for uh, these uh, micro contracts or no big contracts under these twenty five thousand dollars. So, if a government contract officer gives me a ten thousand dollar contract, or they give me pricing, they ask for pricing for a particular product or service. Um, and I, and I, and I'm, and I give them a price and it's under a certain threshold. There's a clause under the federal acquisition regulation mandated through, um, the, uh, um, micro contracts and, and the no bid, um, threshold to where that you have what you call, uh, a gouging. Okay. The, the, the administrative cost to do the due diligence on your price to see if you're, if you're gouging may exceed the the amount of the contract they're trying to issue you out. Hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that on these low bid contracts, on these uh, micro contracts, you can make high profit margins because the due diligence that they have to do or the administrative cost to see if you're actually uh, charging them real high prices, may ex the, the process may exceed the actual amount that they're trying to give you. Mm. So they don't do no research so, so, on these so, micro contracts. So it's not worth it for them basically to, to even do anything with it. They're just like, okay, we're good. We're <laughs> sending over the PO. <laughs> right, 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 right. Wow. All right. So, so I have a couple questions. So, um, you, you, you're doing everything from rat traps to dog food, right? Hey, I do everything <laughs> that I can source. I'm different because. I know the game of government contracts. So I can plug any product or service in it. Right. So I'm like the real life, everybody know War Dog, the movie or well, I like I'm real life War Dog. I sell any everything to the government. Gotcha. That I can put my hands on. It's no special niche with me. My special mm. niche would probably be janitorial supplies, but I sell cars, I sell trucks, you know, I sell, you know, tissue paper towels, gloves. I sell chemicals to EPA, Environmental Protection a uh, Agency. I sell chemicals high level chemicals to them. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, you know, so, so, so if you're setting up your business, so, so let's say, let's say right. you're in a specific niche right now, <clears throat> uh -huh. right. But you want to get right. into this general world of contracting, like, like, like what you do, mm -hmm. it, would it, would it be wise to, let's say, set up another business and make it a, you, you make yourself a general contractor so that you're more attractive to these industries as far as what you do? Because for example, if I'm, if I'm Rommel's transportation, Inc., right. Right. But I'm going. I'm marketing myself to the government to sell rat traps. They may right. look at me and say, "I I don't know. I don't know if that's a fit." So yeah. would I would I start a new entity and just make myself Rommel's general contracting? How how would you how would you do that? It doesn't even matter. This is this is not the private world. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, the public world. This is the private world. This is this is uh excuse me. This is not the private world. This is the public. This is the public sector. So, um. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Ten, uh, 10 years ago, you didn't even need a website um, to do business with the government. As long as you was registering Sam, you were good enough. Mm. I, I'm just now getting the website. I just launched our web, our first website. I never had a website, business cards, none of this stuff because I did business 100% with the government. As mm. long as I was registering and, and under Sam's, I, it was done. It was solidified. My past performance was all in there. Right. Um, so how I'm trying to answer your question There is a company that was called Hot Chicken Wings, Inc. <laughs> out of Griffin, Georgia. Okay. I love where this is going. Good. I'm listening. Okay. It was called Hot Chicken Wings, Inc. Right? They did a DBA or they got AA certified under Hot Wings, Hot Chicken Wings, Inc. And changed uh, to a DBA name to... Uh, Aim Steel International. It was the number one minority owned steel manufacturer and erection company throughout the United States. Wow. Doing over $150 million a year. 
Wow. Hot chicken wings. Ain't <laughs> so what I'm trying to say, it ain't about the title. It's not about the title. It's about your services, about your net code, N-A-I-C-S, your, your net code that you're providing because you list all that to the government. Okay, so my net code with the federal government is tissue, furniture, um, uh, administrative project management, consulting. I list all the services that I'm wanting to offer or I may want to get into. And guess what? With SAM.gov, you can always go back and put as many net codes as you want. Mm. Your first two net codes are your primary net codes, so that's what you specialize in. But all your other net codes, you can put as many as you want. There's no, there's no limit on it. Right. You can right. do any and everything. As long as you got the past performance and the ability to, to show that you can do this. Right, right. So, so my capability statement, I match it up to whatever type of stuff that I'm going for. So if I'm going for, you know, construction, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put on my capability statement to work or past performance in janitorial supplies or into, you know, different commodities and stuff like that. I'm going to put everything that I've done based on construction. Right, right. So I, I, paint, I paint my Picasso. The government don't mm. know you. They just know what you submitted again. Which brings it down to another thing. I hate, I'm sorry I cut you off. For your, for your you, you're good. You're good. You're good. Go ahead, bro. But you want to paint the Picasso right. When you went for that job interview, you know you listed some stuff on your resume that you couldn't do. You ain't know nothing about. But you said you, do, you knew how to do it to get that job. <laughs> Copy you got in the door. Copy your face. There you go. <laughs> you got in the door. Talk the good game. Got in the door. Now you better learn on the job real fast so you can execute. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So the government don't know you. They know what you submit in. Cross your T's, dot your I's. They know based off what you submit in, and that gets you in the door. Now mm. it's time to execute. It's easy to win the contract. It's 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 more cumbersome and hard and a challenge to execute it under the guidelines of your contract. Mm. You got you got ten days to to, to 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 come up with a product or service for your end user, or thirty days. Now you got to make sure you have your logistics and your management all together because it's easy to win the contract, but it's harder to execute them under their guidelines. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you win a contract, they can't unaward you a contract. If the government awards you a contract, if you get a war letter, you get a contract, you sign it, send it back. They can't unaward it to you. It damn near had to go. A bill has to get passed, go through Congress. Damn near, the president has to sign off on it for them to unaward it. <laughs> right. So as it is for them, the hard to because once they award it to you, it's a it's money associated with your with your with your cage code. It's money associated with your business name that's there for you. Once right. you complete the product or service, you're going to get your money. So it's hard to take that money out after they already allocated towards you because they got to spend this budget. Right, right, right. So what I'm trying to say is that just as it's hard for them to unaward you, it's hard for you to, you can't back out either once you get a contract. If you mm -hmm. back out, guess what? You're debarred. It's, it's no, oh man, my prices were too low. I did, I missed out something. They don't want to hear none of that. Mm. It's business. What you trying to back out? Are you the bar? You can never do business with us again. Wow, wow. So you want to make sure you have your T's crossed and your I's dotted. I teach all this through my consultation, my coaching. I teach you how to how to fund your project with no money. You don't need no money to go win a contract. You do not need money to go. You don't need startup money. It's good to have it, but you don't. You can leverage that piece of paper. Mm. Without telling people, you turn that white paper. You turn white paper. It's a green paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he's doing. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. When I won my first contract for Plain County Public School System, six figure contract, I didn't have six figures. I didn't have the, the operational money to actually deploy out or get these products deployed to my end user. I used my piece of paper with my vendors and my suppliers to let them know I had a government contract. That's guaranteed money. Mm. Money in the bank. There you go. Front me, front me the product, please. Right, right, right. So I can sell it to my end user. The government paid me net 10 days because i discounted my my invoice by one percent you get paid faster through the prompt pay act that's another clause on the federal acquisition regularization okay i discounted my invoice by one percent sometimes i do a half a percent do one percent get paid quicker pay me in 10 days i discount my invoice one percent mm. they pay me net 10 my vendor suppliers had me on net 30 it was a win-win situation when i got paid they got paid i built my business credit up real great real fast that way the first year I did that for the first year of my contract. Then I, I kept all the profit that I made. And then I started actually buying my product from my vendors and I got a lower price. Then my profit margins went up higher. Mm. So I got fronted my first year from the plug. Wow, wow. <laughs> okay. And you know, when you get fronted, they always gonna put a higher price on it. That's a fact. Because, because it's liability. 
Okay. After now I'm buying it from you now, prices are lower because I'm spending upfront money. Now right. my profit margin just went up higher. That's right. how I was able to fund my first government project. That was just using my mind, my, my business, my business acumen. That was just using that. But they have a program to where that under the SBA Small Business Association, you have what you call um, Small Business Development Centers, SBDC. There's a small business development center in every city, in every state. These small business development centers will give you a list of all the banks and funding companies and invoice factoring companies that will fund your project based on a federal contract, whether it's state, local, or federal. Wow, wow. So the government give you the resources <laughs> the way that you can fund your white piece of paper. Right, right, right. Turn it into some green piece, piece of paper. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm not saying that this stuff is easy, but once you've got a system down, like and understand what's going on and understanding your, your, the market and how it operates, you can really become a hero from zero overnight. Mm. If you put in the work, you put in the work three minutes, three months, four months down the line, you can be up six figures in gross revenue for your business. Wow. Wow. How do you, how do you choose what you, what you personally source? Do you do it based off the margins? Do you look at um, the, the <clears throat> being able to fulfill, like how difficult it is to fulfill? Like what, what are the things you look at? <clears throat> what's your formula when you're trying to find something to source? Um, what, how, what, what do you think about? What's the things that you're thinking about? The things I'm thinking about is um, I look at all the, uh, the low cost items out there that I can easily get my hands on. So like trash bags, for example. Um, we are in the process of manufacturing and designing our own trash bag. Uh, right now I'm getting samples made out of uh, China um, and working with some uh, manufacturer here domestically to handle my packaging and, and branding for uh, my trash bag, AKA can liner. That's a sexy way of saying trash bag, can liner. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the can line of business for the government, they spend 500, excuse me, $523 million per year on trash bags alone. That is going to increase, that's going to increase another 13% by 2023. The government spent a half a billion dollars just on trash bags alone. <laughs> the cost for me to make a trash bag is pennies on the dollar that I can sell back to the government three times retail what you'll buy something in the uh, grocery store. Right, right. Or, or your Walmart or, or your Kroger or your Publix, you know. Um, our goal is to deploy out all these can liners to all the federal prisons across the United States and public school systems. Mm -hmm. Just that one product right there alone, it could, can make you a seven figure, eight figure, eight figure uh, type of business. Just mm -hmm. that one product. So I, I look at it as what can I get my hands on? What right. is it that the government spend their money on and how can I get it? Mm. So my process is real different to where it's unorthodox to, to the form that I created to find different stuff because it's like, okay, they didn't want something simple as dog food. I was, I never, this is my first time ever selling dog food to the U S army. Okay. Well, how can, how, how do I get this dog? Well, how do I get pricing on it? Okay. Petco, PetSmart. What, 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 I'm trying to do a book order. What, what can y'all do for me? Right, right, right. Oh, Okay, I have, a, I have a business, so I'm tax exempt. Okay, so take that out. Right. Okay, can, can, can shipping be included in that? Can y'all ship it directly to my end user mm. once I pay for it? So they handle my logistics and everything. I try wow. to budget it all into one cost. And then I say, what, what y'all got? Okay, that's what y'all got? Okay, all right, let's put, let's put you know, here in Atlanta, um, growing up, every, my name is Hamza, but everybody call me Ham. Okay. So I put my Uncle Ham tax. You know, you got Uncle Sam tax, I put my Uncle Ham tax on it. I like that. I like that. I like you that. You know, so I put my profit margins or 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 uh, uh on top for overhead and profit, and I submit it to the government. I see what they say. Mm. They can't go to Petsmart and get it themselves. They gotta deploy that money to a small business. There you go. There Who you is go. selling dog food in government contracting? Wow. Nobody. Wow. Nobody. Wow. wow. So it's special niches in, in this stuff, man. They buy any and everything. And the thing about the government, if they don't put it out for solicitation and you know that it's something that they buy, you can bring it to their attention and say, hey, y'all y'all spend money on this, or this is a necessity or something that is uh, uh, useful for y'all. This is what we provide. Let's go straight to negotiation. Let me provide this product or service. 
Mm. It's not everything that you bid on. You're selling your business to the government. Hey, this is what I do. Let's engage. Let's have a meeting. So to go back to the local municipalities, your government agencies or government contractors are easily accessible to you. It's easy for you to set up a meeting with your local government contractor officer because their job is to engage with small businesses. Their job is to pour this money out to local businesses in the local area. Mm. So you can set up a meeting. They have to, they, they may put you 90 days down the window for <laughs> right. a scheduled meeting. But right, they're right, right. that meeting. Right, right, right. You got 10 minutes to tell them, 20 minutes, whatever it is. And then you're, you're, how you close out on the meeting and say, okay, how, not, how are we going to do business? Right. Impair this statement. Don't ask. Tell them, okay, how are we going to do business now? Now that y'all know what I do, now y'all know what kind of product or service I offer. Now, how can I get some money? Right, right. Build a relationship. You know what I mean? It's face to face so they can know who you are. Let them know what you're about. Make now it's more into creating. Um, I was invited to a uh, a seminar, um, not a seminar, but more like a uh, it was a webinar type of thing uh, from American Express. Um, they did a segment on contracting office, and they had one of these federal government uh, contracting uh, officers, a specialist on there, talking about what's going on for the new uh, decade. Okay. They specifically said that they you, you want to have a great online presence, your website. Your website is something like your capability statement. So when they go to your website, they want to know that you are a federal or government contractor. You want to have that on there. Gotcha. You want to have some, some of your past performance. Also, you want to have your SBA profile up because they're looking more at SBA profile, small business association. They're looking at your profile because their goal is to deploy out $200 billion for 2022 small businesses. Wow. Wow. They want to, they're trying to engage with small minority owned businesses for, for 2020. She talked about, I forget her name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry guys. But the, she talked about actually where they awarded a female owned minority owned company of 2019, $1.2 billion mm. contract mm. for a small business. Wow. So they, their goal is to get more small businesses involved into government contracting. So they want to see, a SBA profile because they're searching for people that fit in certain net codes and stuff that they can send you out solicitations or possibly give a no bid contract out to. Mm. This is this is dope. And then they're talking about another fifty billion dollars for the first quarter for women owned businesses. They're specifically targeting women owned businesses right now. Right. <clears throat> right. You know what I mean? So man, the 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 opportunity is huge out here. It's a very small niche, uh, special niche, a uh, small competitive market, but big money budget. Mm. Mm. Get your, you can get your fair share. I share this information effortlessly because there's nothing to hold back, nothing. Because I'm going to get mine. <laughs> right. It's trillions, it's trillions of dollars getting deployed out here. Trillions of dollars getting deployed out here. Everybody can have their own special niche. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're in trucking, if you're in trucking, you can get to this money in trucking because e-commerce, um, uh, logistics, okay, as you know, that is more freight than drivers. Right. That's a fact. There's more, it's more stuff on the on the shelf right now collecting dust and trying to get deployed out to hit to hit they in in uh, location than it is drivers right now. Mm. So when it's a supply and demand type of thing. So when you bring in it. This is in this is in the pri uh, private and public sector all ago. When you talking about just government contracting, it's stuff that got to get delivered. So now you're talking about there's a huge demand for it, with, with a small supply. That means the profit margin is going to be higher. That's a fact. You charge when you want to charge. That's a fact. For all my for all my data analytics people out there, they're 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 uh, focused on deploying out billions of dollars for data analytics because. As you know, we go into the cloud. Everything is cloud-based. You know, uh, getting away with these hard servers to back up and serving. You know, the, the government is, uh, you know, they're slow on everything. So they got all these dinosaur archive documents of all the files and everything and file cabinets and stuff like that. So they're trying to put everything into their own integrated cloud. Data analytics, man, is a high demand right now because of e-commerce and, and websites. It's all statistics, it's all data. So you can know how to sell your customer or to get information on, on your business or on just statistics on general things. You need data analytics. Right. So right. big data is a big thing right now. Mm. You know, 
Microsoft just won a crazy, what was it, two, three billion dollars or more for cloud computing. Microsoft won, they beat Amazon now. I think Amazon protesting it. Um, but there's more money out there for small data analytic companies. Hmm. Because they, it, it's going to be a process. It may take 20 years to get all the data that the government got. You know, right. they, go, they got stored. They trying to hide. That's a, that's a know, fact. That's a fact. That they have to put in. So here's the opportunity to where that you have a special niche. It's a high demand. Now your profit, your, your pricing is going high. So you charge the government a thousand dollars an hour for data analytics, and they like, okay, that's what it costs because shoot, we got to get it done. <laughs> right. And we, and, and we, we got to, we got to allocate this money. We got to allocate this money. All right. T- tell me about, um, Tell me about a time where you where you uh, had a failure. Tell me about a time where you oh, may yes. have overextended yourself. You yes. did something and you had this. You said, "Oh I'm, man, what did I'm, I just now do?" I'm glad you said that because you know people always talk about the success, but never talk about you know the reality of business. It's ups and downs. It's humps and lumps you go through. That's how I got to this point. I didn't have when I'm doing coaching mentorship. You know, I always tell people I didn't have me when I got into this. I had to follow my face. Mm-hmm. I had to take L's. Mm. You know, I had to lose money on contracts just to keep my face good with the government so I don't get the bar. I lost 20 grand on a contract because I underbidded myself, missed out on something major. Wow. Something real small that cost me a lot of money, and I still had to take that L to keep my face card good because I still said I was going to supply it. Right, right. You know, this had happened more than one time. You know, I talked myself out of getting debarred. <laughs> like, it was real critical. Yeah. Like, because I was supposed to, I was supposed to, uh, what was their uh, project? Um, it was uh, Portland cement. A thousand pounds of Portland cement. It was a big contract. It was a real big six-figure contract. Um, my supplier took longer than what it was took to. They put. They kept pushing me back. I was supposed to deliver in 30 days. and wound up took me 180 days to deliver. Wow. The government had me under the fire seat. But the way that I explained to them, I said that my intention is to execute the term that's in this condition. I mean, in this uh, contract. That is that is my intention. Okay. However, no, because you're talking to government contract officers. They are um, underpaid and overworked. They yeah. don't. They're not entrepreneurs. They're not businessmen or women. They don't understand what's behind the scenes. So I try to say, this is my intention. This, this as you see my past performance. This is how I've done business with all these government agencies. Okay. However. Everything doesn't go as planned in business, okay? I'm having some logistics issues with my suppliers and my vendors because it's on back order. Mm. You know, if you bear with me, I got the lead time. It's going to be another four to five weeks. This is, all I can do is be transparent right now with them. I can't make up I'm sick or my mama <laughs> died or, you know, my dog in the hospital. Like, none, right. none of that. They don't care about none of that. I'm, I'm, business to business. Listen. I'm not going to be able to reach these terms in this contract that we have. However, I am going to be able to deliver to you, but in this time frame here, please advise on, on, on what you want to do. Mm. They can't do nothing but like, oh, man, we, the contract is already his name, the money is there. Because you, 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 you saying that, oh, we, we will terminate this and terminate that. Okay, you're still not going to get your profit then. Right. <laughs> you know, right, so you, right. So you, you gotta you gotta be able to be a the businessman and, and entrepreneurs to be able to break it down to them because they're just a job title. They just performing a nine to five. Mm. You're you're performing a, a nine to nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's, this is not a twenty four seven, this is a twenty five eight. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So so you gotta protect your company and you gotta leave it all out on the line. So like it's like competitive type of sport, you know. When you go out there playing in that basketball game, soccer game, whatever sport you're playing, you want to put it all out there on the court. That's what LeBron James, LeBron James, so he leave it all out there on the court. So at government contracts, same thing, I'm going to leave it all out. I'm going to tell these people everything they need to hear to understand that I am all about honesty, integrity, and hard work. Mm. And, and, and being transparent like that with, with the co- contract officer or agency you're dealing with, it's great for them because everything doesn't go as planned. They know that. In life, everybody knows it doesn't go as planned. What we strive to. Right. Okay. I'm not 100% on every execution. I'm probably got an 89%, 90%. You know, right, right now, prime example, I'm on back lead. I was supposed to deliver December 17th to EPA uh, 500 gallons of the specific type of chemical. Okay. Right. 
This real, I'm in, I'm a real, I'm in real critical stuff right now as we speak. The lead time on it is not gonna get to them until February 2nd. Mm. Another another caveat is that these chemicals can't get shipped to Richmond, California because they have some type of uh uh I guess law to where that certain type of liquids can't just be shipped to Richmond, California. Right, right. Like EPA law or something like that. Right, exactly. So guess what? Now I gotta drive it all the way to California mm. to get there. <laughs> wow. Still gonna be able to make profit, but not yeah. as much as I would have made if I would have known that this chemical couldn't get here. Right, right. Through the through the plane or through so, over the air. So you gotta do a debt. So See, all these, it's, it's all still a learning curve at the end of the day. You know, especially when you freelance and you're going after a different type of project. I like it because I learn different products. I learn different services. I didn't, I didn't know what a Polaris, I didn't know what a Polaris vehicle was until the government asked me, could I provide it? Mm. I mm. Googled it and seen that, okay, some electronic golf cart, six passenger ele- electronic golf cart. They say, can you provide it? I say, yes. I didn't know I could provide it. I tell the government, yes, every time. <laughs> you know? Can right. you do it? Yes, we can do it. All right. All right, team. Let's go and do some research. Let's see what we can do. Right, that's right, the, right. That's what I love about it, that I'm able to provide different type of products, and I learn different stuff, too. Okay, so don't. So, make money at the same time. So stop there. So let's say, for example, we just now said the Polaris, right? You, 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 right. you, you have this opportunity for Polaris. What are your, what are your first steps when you're trying to find um, – how are you going to source? Like, what, 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 what's the first thing you do? It's, it's, it's something you never even heard of before. Right. No clue. What's your first move? Um, go, who makes, go, go to who makes it. Who's the manufacturer? Okay. Uh, there, there must be a dealer for this. Okay. And then with the dealer, I'm just negotiating. I'm just negotiating the best price. I, I really tell my supplier that I'm a federal government contractor. I just tell them I'm a, I'm a business. I'm looking at to purchase this, and this is how many. I was going to ask that. And what's the best price you give it to me on? Because if you tell me you're a federal contract, they like, oh, you just want to quote, you bid it. Mm. It's wasting their time. There Listen, we're trying, to pur- we're trying to purchase this product right now. This how much? What's your best price? Get back right. when they give you a when they give you a quote, they're gonna give you the most competitive quote. They quote normally lasts for thirty days. Right, 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 right. You know, so you know that your price, the price that they give you is good for thirty days, and you may have a five day window to submit this price to bid to the government and come back and see. So once you get that contract, you're like, okay, you call back and say, hey, we want to do business with y'all. Yeah. Your prices, your prices is already locked in. Taxes is taken out. Your shipping is already included. Sometimes they may ship it included, depending on the budget or the price of your of your uh of, of what you're trying to spend. Mm. So I try to negotiate all that up front. Got you. And after I get the contract, then I call back and beat them down more on price some more. <laughs> and now I know whatever whatever I beat them down on, I know that it's going straight to my profit. Mm. Got you, got you. You know, so if I get a contract for hundred grand and my supplier say that, hey, we we be able to give it this product for you for for seventy thousand. Once I get the contract, then I'm like, ah, um, well, our budget is around sixty two thousand. Right, right. We, we can do the sixty four eight. Okay, deal. And right. I just, I just, I just save some more money that's going into to the pocket. There you go. There you go. So, at what point do you have to pay that supplier? Um, and what point do you get paid? I don't tell them it's a con. I don't tell them it's a contractor after I get it. Okay. Then I tell them it, my end user is the government. Mm, so, got so, you. So, got so you. can we work out? So we work out net thirty. <laughs> so you just you, you, you string them along basically. <laughs> can I get fifty percent? Can I get y'all fifty percent up front? You know, okay. then the other fifty when I get paid, I try to work out. Or if I'm paying y'all all up front, I need another ten percent discount. Mm. So right. I, so once I have the contract, it's like leverage because that's money, that's gold. And then that's when I, you know, expose who my end user is. It's the Dope. government. The Dope. money is there, guys. Dope. You can do you can do your research, your business research, and my Dun and Bradstreet, my business credit, everything come back A1. I play all my suppliers on time. So they see that track record, then they then they able to to front the product. Mm. I don't keep nothing in storage, no warehouse. Everything is logistics and drop shipper. Okay, I pay this little monthly fee. I keep stuff storage there, and they ship straight out to my end user, or I have my suppliers or my vendors ship straight to my end user. I never keep anything on hand. I'm mm. never sitting on product. I only get the product when I have a contract. That's it. Ninety percent of government contracting is administrative management and project management. And if you're efficient and, and skilled at that, you can exceed in this so well. Mm. Because then you're pretty much 
sitting back while someone else is doing your work. You can sub out your work. You can get a contract yourself and sub it out to a company that can perform the work. And now you're just managing the process. When you're able to manage the process like that, then you can do four or five contracts at a, at a time. Mm. Now, now you're bringing more revenue in. It's wow. about working smart. It's about working smart, not hard. Right, right, right. I don't, wow. I don't have any, I don't keep any inventory, no truck, you know, no gas. We're not it's all straight administrative work here at Global Connect. That's it. This is internet, dope. internet, and, the, and, and a scanner and a printer, <laughs> you know? Right, right. And let's get it. Let's get it. So um, there is proper business etiquette you want to have with the government. It's, it's a little bit different than, than the private world. Um, one is that, of course, you want to have your, um, your capability statement. But in business etiquette, um, like I was telling people, just small things, they, they look at it and make you stand out when it looks like you've been doing this for a while or you understand our, our, our arena, our, our system. When you're signing contracts, when you're signing your, uh, your award letters, sending back, or you're signing your bids or your proposals or your quotes, you want to do it with, um, first you want to type everything. You don't want to write any of your bids out. Okay. I'm professional. Okay. You don't want to write anything out. You want to type everything because you want everything to be neat. You want to be legible so they can read. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Make sure it's, it's, it's clear. Then you want to sign your contracts or your bids or your proposals with blue ink, not with black ink. Blue ink, black ink can be forged. Blue ink can. Mm. And they made, this, they made this rule probably about five, six years ago that all the contracts, awards, bids need to be signed with blue ink. Okay. When you do that, when you do small things like that, they know that you've been doing this. Mm. Or, or, mm. or you respect the protocol. Right, right. Sign everything with blue ink. Can't be forged. They don't teach you this. Right. You know, they, they don't teach you how to do business with them. <laughs> <laughs> the government, the government will tell you about these Ebola vaccination you get, these syphilis vaccination you need to get, but they don't tell you about these billions of dollars that got deployed out for small businesses, female-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses. They don't spread this news out here. Mm. Mm. That's why it's my duty to make sure that I empower my people to let them know, man, you got money with your name on it. Right, right. Go get it. Here, here, uh, here's how, this is how you get your piece of the pie. This is how you're able to come from zero to a hero. That's a fact. That's a fact. Let's talk about Global Connects and let's talk about what you do and the services that you offer. Um, a small business that was in, that's interested in um, learning about this world of government contracting, what are some of the, how, what are the steps you take them through, you know, to go from zero to hero? Okay. So <clears throat> what we offer in coaching, mentorship, and uh, count, consultation. Now we also offer procurement services, tier one, tier two, tier three. And these, you have to qualify for those tier three services. There are more for people that have been in business at least three to five years that have generated over 200 to $500,000 in growth re revenue per year and have some type of uh, special niche that we can engage with. And then you have to get vetted out because I just don't do business because you're spending money with me. I choose who money I want to accept mm. because my goal is to grow your business. When you grow, we grow. If I can't grow your business, I don't want to bring you on as a client. Or if you're in a generic space and not special niche or, you know, or conflict of interest, if I already have a, 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 a client that's into trucking and logistics, I won't take another client on that's in trucking to logistics. Right. You know, it's a conflict of interest. Right. Um, and um, it's, it's tier levels to it. And you have to qualify and get vetted out. That's on my uh, procurement side to where that we get contracts for other businesses and then they pay us an administrative fee and percentage of the contract of, of the award value. It, it normally be between three and a half percent to uh, 8%, depending on the, the level of dollar amount. Okay. You know, the, the million dollar uh, project is normally like three and a half percent, four percent. You know, anything under that is normally between eight to nine percent of contract value. Okay. Um, um, that is uh, procurement services. However, all those slots are booked right now because I have like nine clients right now that I do that for, that we do it for. Mm. Uh, procurement services now for the coaching mentorship and uh, consultation that's for people that are new to it or that want to learn how to do it themselves um i like that more teach you how to go catch your fish than actually catch your fish for you and then you know charging you you know a piece of the fish after right. i kept it for you right. i want to i want right. to show you how to do how you can do it yourself how right. you can grow your business yourself through this avenue of government contract you can bring in additional revenue stream of revenue to your business that you're already doing in the private world, that's great. 
add some more money into your pipeline, get some government contract. One contract could be a five-year contract. That, that, that's money on the books for five years. Right. Project, projections out. So um, my consultation is not like no, any old regular consultation. Uh, we, we do a, a one-hour uh, consultation. Um, Paul. Uh, prior to the beginning of New Year, I did um, um, a one-hour free consultation. Okay. I did. I did. I, I did that promotion all the way up to me. I, I was booked. Uh, I was. I did two hundred and twenty-five free consultations. Wow. Um, in in less than in less than ninety days, I did two hundred and twenty uh, free consultations. Now our consultations are not free anymore for the mm. New Year, mm. but. It's not like I'm just having a phone conversation with you. Um, no, nine out of ten times, anybody that had my free consultation knows that you know I talk. <laughs> I, I, we we be on the phone two three hours. Okay. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I want to make sure you understand, you comprehend this 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 niche, this right. this business module. Right. Okay. To show you the importance is that how you can tap into this money. So my consultation is not just talk. I'm giving you the steps. I'm giving you what you need. Okay. Um, we talking about data analytics, um, your, your niche, um, strategic plan on how to execute and how to win the contract. This is just consultation. This is not mentorship or coaching. This is all in a one hour consultation with me. We identify everything that you want to do, whether you're already in business or you want to start a business. We try to identify the goal. What is your goal and how we want to help you reach your goal. Now that consultation doesn't end there. You have to follow up with me. I demand a progress report update. I mm. demand it because I don't want my information going in vain. Because I'm giving right. you, I'm giving you money. Right. I, I have currency. The currency is the information. Yeah. That is the goods. Yeah. And I'm exchanging my goods and my currency with you for my one hour consultation is four hundred ninety five dollars. Okay. I'm exchanging. I'm exchanging my 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 goods or my currency that I have in exchange for your dollars, for your US dollars, all right? People are like, damn, man, you $500, man, that's high, man, one hour consultation, but my consultation is like, it's like, man, like no other, but I told this person over the phone, it was during my free consultation uh, uh, period. He said, man, uh, so how much your consultation gonna call after the, after the new year? I was like 500, uh, 495 to be exact, plus taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, man, what? But what, man, that's a lot. I said, um, do, me, do me a favor. Write down $500 on a piece of paper right now. She said, why? Just, just, please just do it over the phone with me. Write it down. She said, I wrote it down. I said, okay. Now put a comma on that and put three more zeros. So how much is that? She said, that's 500000 I said, that is what you're getting in exchange for your $500. I'm giving you a half a million dollars worth of information or more mm. to where that, this is a $500 investment that you're, making on yourself to put you in the opportunity to make a half a million dollars or more. Right. I exceed your expectations. That's our goal here. I want to exceed your expectations. I want to go over beyond because the man that does more than what he's paid for will soon be paid for more than he worked. Mm. Preach. No doubt. So I put, I, I'm passionate and I love what I do. And and I don't know if you feel the energy or, or through it any, but 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 I, I I am passionate and I love what I do. I feel it, okay? brother. I feel it. So I I really want to empower you. I want to grow your business. I want you to understand this. I just don't want your money. So I demand that you follow up with me within thirty days. To let me know that you did the steps to take to 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 get into this arena if you're really interested. And it expires me. Yeah, dang, man, this information that I share or this, this uh, information that I talked to someone and trained them on, they went out and executed. Right. They went out. When you get an email and say, hey, man, I won my first six-figure contract within 60 days from a, from a consultation, not a mentorship or coaching, just from a consultation. Wow. That's inspiring to me because that means that I'm really teaching you. I'm really educating you on how to do this process. Right, right, right. And I demand, I demand you stay in touch with me and follow up with me because I want to know where you at. I want progress email update reports. I demand that. <laughs> Accountability. Like, no doubt. Yes. Because I, I don't want my information going in vain. No doubt. Because I don't, we don't have to share it. I don't have to share it. I could be in my own little under the rock. You know what I'm saying? Winning contracts of my own. Like, yeah. I don't need, I don't, I, this is not a, 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 
a way of means for me is empowering my people. This is a service that I have to charge for my time because I can do some other things, but also I enjoy it that I am, it's, it's, it's uplifting to see other businesses growing, seeing other people going from zero to hero. Mm. Whether you win a $10,000 contract, a million dollar contract, it doesn't matter. You are doing it. Your foot is in the door. So for its past performance, like I said, I want, I'd rather do, um, I'd rather get a hundred ten thousand dollar project that equal to a million dollars than to just get one project for one million dollars. Mm. Reason being is that I it shows that I've done business with the government a hundred times. Right, right. So my past performance looked great. Right. And we still grossed a million dollars. And if it's ten thousand dollar project, you know my profit margins are high. <laughs> under, those, under those micro contracts. No doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? No doubt. So that is that is that that is one of my formulas or or uh, strategic executions on how we win contracts on a consistent basis and make high profit margins with the government mm. through those through those uh, thresholds through, through those micro contracts and the past performance is there. They don't look at dollar amount. They look at what you what you've been doing. Right. All these government agencies, man, it's just a list of, of government agencies that we've done business with, and they, that shows you know that you're solid into this space. Yeah. Yeah. They know that you understand the process. They they know that you understand the policies and the procedures. When you're able to, man, it's 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 powerful when you're able to educate a contractor officer on how they're not breaking the law when they give you a no bid contract and you mm. state the clauses and laws to them because mm. they don't even know it because the way they was trained was different than how you how you trained yourself or how you read the law. Right, right, right. Most of them don't even know the clauses the way I. They were like, man, what are you, a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, say, I say, ma'am, you, ma'am, well, sir, you're not breaking the law when you give me a no-bid contract up to $25,000. Yeah. You're only breaking the law when you ask for kickback. Yeah. When you ask for something under the table for, for you giving me a contract. That's now you're breaking the law. Right, right. That's oh, a fact. So, 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 so give me some of that money. <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. No. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> wow. I show up. And, and and the thing about it is they don't they don't have uh they don't have um in your local municipality they don't have a, a strong participation of minority owned businesses. Mm. I, this is here in, in in Georgia where I'm at, Fort County, Cab County. They they don't they told me specifically, bro, we don't see more people like you, let alone young like you, but let alone people that look like you, whatever age they are, right. in this space. Right. And they'd be like, man, hey, 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 Hamza. Can, can 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 you get us some furniture? This is for the county. This right. is be, this is this is before Christmas. They're like, listen, man, we need six executive office offices offices for our attorneys. Uh, we need it before Christmas. Can you send us a quote for it? Right. Can you do it? I, I got you. I'll send a quote. Ten thousand five hundred dollars to be exact. They said, Great, well, let's do it. It cost me forty two hundred dollars to to get that furniture for them. Mm. Wow. And deliver it to them all before Christmas. And they like, man, man, you the best. You saved us. It's great. We thank you. We're going to New Year with new office. Everybody do everything. Let's get it. <laughs> That's dope, man. But when That's you take dope. advantage of opportunities like that, when you you create a relationship with your own local municipality, yeah, you know, they, they know who to call on. They don't have yeah. to put certain stuff out for bid if it's on a certain threshold. They can just do business directly with you. Yeah. That's yeah. what you want. I'm getting out of the process of a bid, bidding on stuff and getting more into when I bid, I'm strategically bidding. It used to be I throw a thousand things on the wall and see if two things won't stick. Now I may throw five things on the wall and all five of them going to stick. Because mm. it's quality bid. I know what's going to happen. Right. Right. Hey, Hamza, Global Connect, you might want to bid on this. You know what I mean? Or, or um, you know, strategically when you talk, man, I wish we had more time to talk because I could break this thing all the way down. You have what you call... Uh, Mandatory pre-bid meetings or non-mandatory pre-bid meetings. Your mandatory pre-bid meetings mean that anybody that show up to this meeting about this bid or, or uh, solicitation or, or uh, quote or proposal that has to be submitted in, these are the only people that can bid on it. Mm. So if no one shows up, if you're the only one that showed up to the mandatory pre-bid meeting, they got to do business with you. This right. happened to me four, four times. Wow. I strategically, I strategically drove four hours to Columbus, Georgia, on a solicitation that I had a great feeling that it wasn't going to be a lot of people to show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, for, it was a construction project for asbestos and a mold and lead removal for uh, a client of mine. Okay. I went there I went there to the pre-bid meeting. 
right? Mandatory pre-bid meeting. I walked in there, I seen four other people. And I was like, I guess I'm not, I guess it's only us here to bid on it, guys. They was like, no, they, they was like, they was like, they was like, no, no, we're not contractors. We're contracting officers. I said, oh, so I'm the only person. So let's do it. Let's get it. Let's wow. Get it. Wow. So, That's crazy, and, man. And I, I knocked them upside the head, man. We did 65% profit margins on that. Wow. Another thing, Coosa High, Coosa High School out of Rome, Georgia. This was the biggest asbestos project I ever got for a contractor. It was $280,000 to remove asbestos from the high school. Man, under the EPA laws, man, anything less than 1% technically is not hot for asbestos. So all this stuff was under 1%. Right. So it was straight. It was an easy cookie cutter job. I was the only uh, asbestos contractor that showed up for the mandatory preview meeting. Of course, you had a big project, so everybody, contractors going after a different type of work uh, under the certain category on the asbestos part. I was the only contractor, you know? I had all these other people that didn't look nothing like me. I was the only person that, that was black there, mm. let alone mm. in the asbestos. They young, so they're like, mm, are you sure? So, you know, <laughs> when, you start, when you start talking that talk, and then now they're like, okay, he knows what he's talking about. Right. He's young, but he, he knows his shit. Right, you know, I had right. I, I went through this all my life that you're young, you're young, you know. So I had to know my stuff so I can be able to hold my ground. Yeah, when I started, yeah. You know what I mean? So we went straight to negotiation. Two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollar contract. Okay, we profit a hundred grand off of that. We we're the only bidder. Wow. They submitted. They submitted. Lay down. No negotiation. I gave them the price. And they were like done. Right there on the spot. We we went into negotiation. Wow. I said, all right, I already have my pricing ready. All right, I already have my pricing ready. They're like, you don't want to do a walkthrough? No, we don't walk through. <laughs> I see the I see the asbestos report, and my asbestos report came back everything less than one percent hot. So it's like it really ain't asbestos, so, but I'm gonna charge our asbestos prices. Right. Y'all right, could have just right. did a y'all could have just did a regular demolition with with, with water holders to right. to keep everything condensed, you know. Right. But right. but I'm I'm gonna charge y'all the asbestos prices. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 You know. But so so this is another niche when you go to stuff that's a mandatory pre-bid meeting, you can see who your competition are. You can see who, who else is going to be bidding on it. And then you want to do walkthroughs to see what, what areas that where you can make your prices competitive, but still beat, beat, your, beat your competitor. Right. Most people say, well, can you see competition prices? No, you don't want to see that. Listen, don't give yourself anxiety about what your other competitors are going to be able to price for. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. You want to focus on what I can do my service or, or bring this product for. And, and make money and be happy with it. That's all you need to focus on. Mm. Unnecessary anxiety, worry about what your competitor's gonna do because you can't see, you don't know. Right. Hell, they, your competitor may bid $50,000 less than you and may lose their shirt and back mm. if they bid it wrong. Right. So make sure your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted and make sure that you are, um, make sure that you are focusing on what you can do the product or, or service for and make money and be happy with it. That's all you need to be focused on. Right. Not focus right. on competition. Right, right, right. Man, this this is amazing, bro. Like, I mean, like the story you, you just now told with the pre bid, pre bid, like yeah. you just literally just showing up. You know what I mean? Made all the yeah. difference in the world. Literally just being the the one person who was there. I mean that 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 speaks That's, volumes. That really in business, in business itself, ninety percent is just showing up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know yeah, I mean? I mean that really speaks volumes, man. People are not taking advantage of these opportunities, man. It's 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 mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. Um, yeah. l l I, I want to just um touch on entrepreneurship for you real quick. With you real quick, I want to take it back to 2014. Um, after you worked for that company for nine months, and you said you um you know got into business for yourself. Just talk to me about. Um, what went through your mind that process? Why did you decide to leave that company and just start your own thing? And how important is entrepreneurship to you? Um, entrepreneurship is my life. That entrepreneurship is my lifestyle. Um, I wasn't looking for a job. I was looking for an opportunity to expand my horizon, expand my experience, expand my knowledge. I want something to, to challenge myself. Uh, that was my first time ever having a job. Anything that to where that I actually... Um, it wasn't actually a job. Anything that I actually come into where I want to bring some value and I want to get paid for what I bring to the table, not for when I clock in and clock out. So that particular job, project management job, uh, it, it was salary brace. Plus, I got a percentage of every contract I brought to the table. 
Um, it was it came to where it was an independent contract agreement because I came and negotiated to where that I want to come in as 1099 and not W2. Mm. That's how I how I negotiated in the beginning. Dope. Um, and then and then I said uh, um, when I hit this when I hit this number, you know when I in the first 90 days I, I was like dang okay I understand this I'm getting I fix I'm fixing their algorithm their bidding method and everything and then once I hit a half a million I I came back and said okay uh, from two and a half percent we need to go to five point five percent on contract value. I started knowing my value. So entrepreneurship always been it to me. Um, any situation I want to get into, I always put it to where that I can make as much money as I want to. You can't tell me how much I'm worth. Mm. I want to tell myself how much I worth. You know, you know, you, it, it's three things. You have some people that think out, think outside the box. You have some people that think inside the box. And then you have some people that say a box does not exist. Mm. With me, a box does not exist. You can't put me in the box because there's no box there. This whole world is my playground. Dope. So uh, I was I was born into entrepreneurial spirit through uh, family. I come from an Islamic background, so it's not about entrepreneurs. The businessmen in my community, in my in my in my family, nobody worked for anybody. Everybody worked for themselves. So I always been a hustler. I always been uh, the middleman guy, brokering, putting deals together, and all oh, real estate, you know, construction. You know, I, I, I'm selling pieces of candy to the teachers at school. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. like in, in elementary, like true story. In elementary, I had a pecan tree in my house. In elementary, I used to pick all the pecans off the tree. I used to shell them, right? I used to split them in the middle, put peanut butter in the middle, put them back on top, dip them in white chocolate, milk chocolate, freeze them, put them in sandwich bags, and sell them for fifteen dollars to my teachers at school. Wow. Wow. Taking a product that God gave me, you know, <laughs> and turning it into some money. I, I always had that hustle, entrepreneurship. So I was like, I want to get into construction. I want to learn. I want to learn how to read blueprint. Mm. You know, I want to know how to do takeoffs. You know, I, I want to learn how to write proposals. I want to learn this stuff. You know what I mean? And and I had the opportunity. Like I said, I painted that resume to get me in the door. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. And I talked I talk the game to where they, I got in. Now I had to execute. Mm. That's just my personality. It's addictive, man. I I I spend hours up all night because I want to be the best at everything I do, not for in competition with anyone. I want to impress myself. I compete with myself. What did him to do last year? What did him to do in 2017, 16? I got to outdo that. My life is all about abundance. Mm. What's for What's for me? I know it's going to be for me. Nobody can take that from me because I manifest everything that I want in my life. When I say it, it's done. Now the universe better comply. They working right now for me as we speak. Mm. That's that's how I live my life. When yeah. I say I'm going to do something, it's done already. The universe yeah. felt my vibration. Now they said Hamza said he has to build six businesses for 2020 to six figure, seven figure business. All right, let's work for him. Everybody, everybody work together. Right. To make make his manifestation come to reality. That that I believe that I live my life like that. No doubt. You know, and and um, it's what I put in is what I get out. So my entrepreneur spirit to get back to it in business. Uh, uh, acclimate came from just experience, life experience. I didn't go to college, you know. I barely graduated high school, you know, 1.9 GPA, you know, average. You know what I mean? But I was loaning my teachers light bill, water bill, because I've been hustling. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I've been, I've been out, I've been out here off the porch at a young age, <laughs> taking care of myself. You know, yeah, since yeah. I was 17. You know, I got married when I was 18. I had my first child when I was 18. Got married when I was 18. Okay. You know, I was living on my own since I was 17. So. I, it was no choice but to get it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. No doubt. So, no doubt. So now, now I'm able to transition from that and be able to, you know, get into a legitimate business to where I'm doing high level business with the government, which is something that they already have access for us out here, and be able to be a liaison and help other businesses grow. Man, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. And for, I'm 31 years old. I got into this space, man, at 23, 24, man. So it's going almost seven years in this space. And I'm like, I'm not, it, we haven't even reached prime level yet. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a it's fact. It's like, it's just the beginning of something great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Global Connect is not just a regular name. It's just a Global Connect. No, my relationships are global. My connections are, are deep. My network is, is, is crazy. You know what I mean? Across this continent. You know, I've been in Malaysia, Morocco. Senegal, Gambia, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, you know, um, Pakistan, Indonesia. This is all in the past 24 months. Like, 
I, I have these relationships that I've honed over the years into the government contracted space and just business space. And now I'm utilizing it to where I'm able to engage and help other people's businesses grow. Wow. I, contractor offices in my, that, that I have strong relations with in, in different states all across the map. And then I'm just, when I say global connects, I, it's really global connects. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And now I'm just connecting the dots with other businesses. So when I bring up a value to someone, that's how you be an asset, mm. not a liability. Mm. So I never wanted to be a liability where that I got to come in and I'm just clocking in the nine to five or I'm clocking in for 40 hours because I'm easy to be replaced. So when I come in as a value to where that, hey, I'm generating money for you, literally. Right. I did $1.6 million in 10 months. Right, right, right. Now, this is what I'm demanding because I'm bringing value. Now, I'm just clocking in. Hey, I came on work on time for a year straight. I deserve a dollar raise. No, that's weak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, doubt. no, I came and generated millions of dollars in this time frame. And I am demanding an increase on the percentage of the contract value that I'm, that I'm uh, securing for you all. Wow. Or I can go provide these services to, to someone else. That's when I start realizing I'm just going to freelance. Now. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be controlled under this one single thing. I can offer these services out to a plethora of different businesses in whatever field they are in. Right. Any business that you have out there, guys, any business that you have out there, I am 99.9% uh, .9 accurate that I can correlate that into government contracting. Mm. If, you're just, if, you, if you're a barber, if you're doing hair, look, the Army, the army needs barbers and, and hairstylists on base. Okay? I, I told another female business, I said, you might want, want you to create your own, own tampon. You got hmm. female soldiers. Hmm. They, they buy this stuff. <laughs> right, 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 right. Wow. Army boots. You know what I'm saying? You got prisons. Prison, they need, they need towels. They need, you know, T-shirts, socks, underwear. You know what I'm saying? I saw a thousand Bibles to Fulton County, Rice Street. I'm not sure you feel uh, uh, familiar with, uh, with Atlanta, but Rice Street uh, is, a, is a Fulton County jail here in, in Atlanta. Okay. A thousand Bibles. Wow. A thousand, uh, 200, 200 cases of trash bags. Like it's different small stuff like that, that, that it sounds like so simple, minute, but man, it, it man, it don't have to do, it don't have to be rocket science, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, one plus one is two, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, for sure. For sure. Bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so man, it, it's just inspiring to be able to, to share my story because my story's not over. I'm still writing chapters in my book. That's and I'm right. enjoying the, listen, I enjoy the process way more than the proceeds. That's right. I like that. Because the, the proceeds is the end result. The process is what I'm in love with because I know that the end result is going to be money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those going to be fact. millions. Or That's the end a result. fact. That's a fact. Let's enjoy the process, man. Enjoy these humps and lumps. Enjoy these trials and errors. And enjoy the struggle because I told them, I tell them, to, through every difficulty, surely with every difficulty comes ease. Mm. Surely with every, when you're going through a challenge, when you're going through a difficulty stage in your life, enjoy it, do it with a smile. I call it a beautiful struggle because it won't last forever. Mm. You don't stay down forever. That's this law of life. What goes up must come down. What goes up must come down. Okay? Right, right. So when, right. You're, going through, when you're going through something, know that you're going to go through it when you're going through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna go through it all the way. Surely, yeah. with every difficulty comes ease. So when you go into a difficulty state, you smile because it's not gonna last forever. Mm. Any challenges or difficulties I go, man, I enjoy even more because I know that the end result. I know what the other side looks. I know the light. I know what it's gonna be. Right. I know what what my goal is. I know where I'm going. Right, right, right. So I embrace the process. I embrace the struggle. I embrace all of that because that that builds character, that builds experience. You know, and make you more reputable. Yeah. And when you get through it, when you get through it, that's the fun part. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Listen, brother, this this has been an amazing conversation, man. You um you definitely blew my mind, and now I see why you are so heavily requested. Um, DMs, <laughs> everybody in my yo, you got to. I mean, I'm, it's crazy, man. Global connects, global connects, and, and and you have definitely exceeded my expectations, brother. Um, awesome, man. I'm glad to exceed your expectations. That's what I like to hear. No, nah, that's a that's fact. Dope. Yeah. I wish we had a longer time to talk, man, because I got a lot of points. It's a lot of stuff. I just, I just give out this game for free. 
Yeah. I just share it out because I want people to grasp it. I want people to know that, hey, here's the opportunity. Yeah. Here's the opportunity right here for everyone. Whatever right. business that you're in, or if you aspire to get into business, you know, or you already have a business, man, use government contracting as a way to bring some additional streams of income. And you can do this being part-time. If you work for a job, I'm not saying quit and jump off the cliff. Right. And go work. Right. You can do this part-time and still do government contracting. That's a fact. That's a fact. You can still work full-time. If you're going to do 40 hours for someone else and you don't even do 10 hours for yourself, you're cheating yourself. Right. If you're going to put 40, 50 hours in for someone else, man, put 100 hours in for yourself. There you go. There you go. Always have, have, have a bigger goal. Have a bigger goal. You know what I mean? Or else you're going to be building someone else's business for the rest of your life. Yeah, build man. your own legacy. Build, build your own legacy. Break the generational uh, a wealth curse amongst, amongst African Americans, amongst minority people in the United States. We, we, statistics say that we have a net worth of less than negative $800 in mm. a black hole family. Mm. And we wow. have, we have, right now we're in an age to where that we have all the information easily accessible, easily accessible to us but we still choose to look at Shade Room and look at the bull crap on there. Or mm. we still choose to look up all this other ignorant stuff on Google that ain't benefiting us. Ain't no real nutrition for, our, for us to build and be better. Talk but we have it. all this information easily accessible to us. Yeah, yeah. You can do anything you want to do with YouTube, Google, anything. Yeah. You can build a car <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> you right. Steps. right, you know? right, right, right. Opportunity is out here, and I want to take people advantage of it. You know what I mean? Um, I want to give opportunity to follow, like, like um, every Wednesday we do We Global Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Every Wednesday I go live 9:30 p.m. and I touch over three major topics for government contracting. My lives last for at least three hours. Like I have to turn it off, then turn it back on because Instagram will kick me off because <laughs> you only to be on there for 60 minutes. Right. But my, my lives be intense. Every Wednesday, We Global Wednesday, I go live 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I go over three major topics uh, for government contracting every Wednesday consistently um, and, and share this information. And, and I had people say, well, I can't afford your services. I say, if you can't afford my services, that doesn't mean that you can't do government contracting. Right. Bring your behind on my Wednesdays on live so you can get this free game. Mm. Follow, follow my Instagram, global leader underscore, so you can get this free content, this free information, okay? And you should be able to be able to, to navigate through that because I want you to win at the, at the end of the day. Don't let you can't afford something be a caveat to why you can't win in life. Right. That's a fact. Okay? So if you can't afford my services, that's still not a, a good excuse. I'm sorry. That, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the opportunity. Every Wednesday, man. It's a forum. I'm creating a community because there's no community forum around government contracting where people can come onto something and talk about their experience or talk about different things in government contracting so people can know and be connected with. Right. It doesn't exist. Right. Um, and then also sharing quality content onto on my social media platform so people can get this information. And if you want to go deeper down the rapper hole, let's let's do a count. Let's do some coaching. Let's do some mentorship. Let's do some consultations. No doubt. Because I want you to win. I want to put more wins on the board, not just in government contracting, but for other people down there empowering. I want to mm. touch the touch people. I want to touch people through government contracting. I want to build people businesses. The best way I can I can empower someone is by putting some money in their pocket and the information that go along with how to do so. That's a fact. That's a like fact. straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I hope this was empowering you some kind of way. Right oh now. man, I, man, you, you some information. You have my wheels turning, care. brother. You have my wheels turning. Um, you know, I was I was gonna ask you. I always ask my guests. Um, you know, what's next? And I mean, you 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 spoke earlier about you're you're actually developing garbage bags. You know what right. I mean? And you'll probably right. be the first and last guest that's ever gonna be making garbage bags on this show, which is so <laughs> dope to me. Like, that's so dope to me, man, because that's really think like there is no box. Like you said, there is no box. Who's thinking about right. creating garbage bags, right? While everybody's trying to open up a rap label or, right. or, or, or a hair salon or right. you know, a clothing line, right. Hams, Hams is making garbage bags. You know what I mean? Right. So right. I, 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 love, I love that. What, what else is next for you, man? T take me to where your brain is next one, two, three years. Uh, next one, two, three years, um, definitely going to have carry all up to a uh, hundred million dollar business. Uh, the, the trash bag company um, that, that we started, it's called carry all. Um, the goal is um, to have that in, and not just in the government sector throughout all the public uh, sectors of uh, public schools, um, prisons, 
uh, systems um, and government agency buildings to provide our trash bag, but also to be having it all the Walmarts, all the Publix, all the Kroger's across the United States. Because guess what? There's only two major can liner businesses, Hefty and Glad. Right. Okay. And they, they're all owned by conglomerates, Procter & Gamble. You know, if anybody don't know, Procter & Gamble is like a PE, uh, private equity company, a holding company to where they have all these other companies. Like Procter & Gamble got Clorox, you know, they got um, um, uh, uh, Gang, um, Tide. A lot of them own the same type of product, just different names. Right. Um, our goal is, is, is to compete on that same level. Uh, as a minority-owned company, a minority-owned U.S.-based manufacturer-owned trash bag company that is that that is going to be better than Glad and Hefty, you know, um, that's that's one of the goals for the, in the next three years. Uh, the next the next three years, I'm going to have built 30 other businesses, six-figure, seven-figure businesses, minimal. My mm. goal is six year, six businesses this year. Mm. The next year, I want to double it. And then the next year after that, I want to double it. So this year I'm gonna do six businesses, take them up to six figures, seven figures. The next year I'm gonna do 12 businesses. The next year after that I'm gonna do 24 businesses. The next year after that I'm gonna do 48 businesses. That I'm leveling up like that every year. I'm trying to beat and exceed my own expectations. Mm. Not in competition with nobody but Hamza Sabri. That's it. <laughs> I'm trying to impress myself. I love that, man. I love and, that. And, and, and if we can engage and build other businesses and a network like that, then it's always gonna be opportunity to come in. When you're able to be a, a resourceful and be able to be a utility for other businesses and other people so they can get out of this rat race and build their business and build their legacy and break the generational uh, curve. I'm trying to leave back a legacy, man. I'm trying to make my stamp here on earth, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's my, it's not about money and materialistic, materialistic thing. It's about leaving a legacy, leaving a, a brand for my family, for my kids, you know, for my community, you know? It, it's, it's, it levels to it. One, you take care of yourself. One. Then you take care of your family. Because you can't take care of your family, you can't take care of yourself first. Get yourself together first. Take care of your family. All right? Then you take care of your community. Then you take care of the world. In that order. And I figured that I can do this all through government contracting. Right. Take care of myself, my family, my community, and the world. Global Connect. Wow. Wow. Well, I, 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 I normally ask for a final thought. Um, uh, un unless you have one, because I mean, that sounded like a final thought to me. <laughs> That's a final <laughs> thought, but I want to re-emphasize that the best way we can empower our people is by putting some money in their pocket and the information that goes along with how to do so, the right information, mm. how to do so. Mm. There's a lot of information going out here, but that don't mean it's the right information. Mm. And everything I say, you can Google, I give you clauses, I give you um, um, a laws that you can go back and verify everything I'm saying. I'm not giving you any statistics. I'm not giving you an opinion. I'm giving you our actual protocol to government contracting. The best way we can empower our people is by putting some money in their pocket and the information that go along with how to do so. Go catch your own fish. Mm. Go get this, this big old ocean out here. Go catch your own fish. Wow. Wow. Hamza Sabri, man. Where, where, do, where, where do people connect with you? Um, we talked about the Wednesday Lives. How do they find you on Instagram, your other socials? Talk, to, okay. talk about it. My Twitter, my Twitter is Global Connect LLC underscore. Uh, my Instagram is Global Leader underscore G L O B A L L E A D E R underscore Global Leader underscore. Um, our website is theglobalconnect.com. P H E Global Connects with a S dot com. That's where you can uh, book any services, appointments, see what's coming up on our agenda, um, seeing news feed, um, information, content quality content information on our Instagram. You'll get quality content information. We Global Wednesdays. Every Wednesday I go live, 9.30 p.m. And I talk about three major topics for government contracting. Best way we can empower ourselves and empower the people to put some money in their pocket and some information to go along with it. I believe in it. I stand on it. When you grow, we grow. I live by it. Mm, no doubt, man. No better way to end the show than on that note. Um, you the truth, man. You the truth. Like I said, I'm, 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 I've just been sitting here. Wheels have been turning. I love it, man. Great conversation. I really appreciate man, you for joining I, me I, on the show. I, I appreciate you having me on here. Truly do. I truly do. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you so much, man, for joining us. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. We, I definitely want to stay connected with you. I'm actually going to be in Atlanta um, in a couple weeks. So, you know, maybe we okay. can link up. 
You know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, man. We definitely, we definitely going to link up. Yeah, yeah there we go. Done. I like it's that. Done. I like it's that. I like, done. I like that for sure. I see you I, when you get here. All right, my brother. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you so much. All right. Thank All right. you. Be good. All right. You too.